We are fishing for gold on this week's episode of Food Culture. White gold, as it is known in the South Island. John Gadsby takes us in search of those tasty, translucent delicacies known as white bait. This is no ordinary fish. It may be small in size, but it is big in reputation. Why does this fish have its own culture? What is the secret of cooking white bait? What is all the fuss about? John's journey into the world of the white bait starts in the beautiful South Island spot of Queenstown. The plan is to drive through one of the passes that joins the east to the west coasts and find the source of one of the most famous white bait rivers, the Haast. We're after white baits, those tiny little things that they refer to over on the west coast where we're going as white gold. I mean, battles have been fought over it, marriages have broken up over it. You, you have to pay a fortune for a white bait stand over there on the coast. So we'll give you a bit of the history of white baits. We'll go over and meet some, some of the hardcore white baiters and some of the hard case white baiters. And we'll, we'll show you that to this, again, iconic New Zealand food is being prepared by people who are not necessarily New Zealanders or who haven't, haven't been here long, but uh, they've taken, they've got the white bait lust as well. So we'll see you somewhere over on the west coast, round about Haast probably. New Zealand white bait is about five to six centimetres long. In New Zealand, there are 19 species of galaxids, with the common galaxias or inanga in Māori being the white bait that is so eagerly sought. This is the beginnings of the Haast River. I suppose you'd have to call that a bridge over troubled water, perhaps the original one. I mean, you really have to stop around this area of the country to just to take things in. It's so magnificent, really. And, I mean, look at look at that torrent. It's amazing how the wee white bait managed managed to swim up there, isn't it? You know, they, they must be strong little buggers. They really must. No, no, they, they actually don't go up there. They go to places uh, which are a bit flatter and more gentle and uh, the way we're heading. Uh, and if, if you see me doing this a bit, it's not because I've got nits, it's because of the, the sand flies, uh, the trademark of the West Coast, one of the few downers about this beautiful place. Go away! Well, here we are in Haast and, and imagine waking up to that view every morning. The, the clouds are just creeping in, but those southern Alps are covered in snow. And uh, I'd like to introduce you to John Dubley, who is mine host here at the uh, Haast Heritage Hotel, and who's going to show us how the, the locals cook white bait. And it's unusual, isn't it, having a South African teaching New Zealanders to cook white bait? Okay, a South African in Haast. Uh, how did that happen? Oh, look at that scenery. You can't, you, uh, you can't get away from it every single day. That look out there, it's inspirational. The food that we've got in this, on the West Coast, you can't beat it. All right, shows how white bait is done. In Haast, uh, via, where, via where, Johannesburg? Yeah. <laughs> we'll so by, so by, the, by the fishing, which somebody else does, thank goodness, I haven't managed to get to go and bait yet. It's definitely one on my pick list. Go for a good healthy portion of this beautiful white bait. It's pretty healthy, yep. Yeah, we don't cheat people. I mean, it's, it's iconic and we, we, we like to deal with um, 
all these beautiful ingredients and products, mm. and you know, it, it just it just blows people away. You know, I have Good. had white bait patties with three white bait in them sometimes, you know, but uh, not not on the coast, I should say. Yeah. Good free range eggs. Yeah. As you can see, we like to leave a little bit of the evidence. <laughs> I'll just dust that off just in case it gets into the dish. That's um, local eggs, nice yellow, wholesome. Going with our seasonings, call this a, a nice blend of, um, ma mainly it's, it's got garlic in it, it's got a little bit of spiciness to it. I add a little bit of paprika with that, a little bit of white pepper, seasoning, and the key, garlic. Not a, bit a lot, a tiny bit of garlic. just a tiny bit, just to put that flavour in. Well this is getting pretty exotic isn't it? Buzz it up, easy as. Don't mix it too much. You like to get that little white strain of the egg in it with the yolks. Mm. Get a pan on the flame. This is how easy it is. See, some people just use the egg white, don't they? Uh, yes, that some people yeah. mainly just salt. Traditionalists will go salt, pepper. I mean, obviously, if, if, if you're in the bush or on the sea, mm. um, or on the rivers, I should say, you um, don't have a lot of available to you. We just put three little patties down. Cooks quite quickly. I think that one there just winked at me. It just, Did yeah. it? Mm. To show food culture, it's a, it's a dirty, dirty job, but someone has to do it. Oh, you poor mm. man. Let me have a bit of that. Oh, that's is that good? Mm. That is beautiful. It's an explosion of flavours. Mm. Mm -hmm. And you, you still get the white bait coming through. You know, I say yeah. so myself. You know, you've just got the right level of those herbs and spices to enable the delicacy of the white bat flavour to come through you. I, I tell you, I, I shall call this white bait bloom fontaine. Bloom fontaine, fantastic. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Look at you. Or oh, how about uh, <laughs> how about springbok patties? <laughs> 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 They're definitely springing all over the ocean at the moment. Oh, they are. Oh, these are beautiful. Good. Mm. Well done. Mm. Lovely. Whitebait comes with a lot of interesting larger-than-life characters and stories of escapades that have gone on at the mouths of many rivers. Fights over stands, the tricks to divert the flow of the current. Mmm, whitebaiting is serious stuff. John did not have to go further than the local pub to meet some of these characters and get an invite for a day's whitebaiting. Look at that, I've never heard white bait called that before. <laughs> Riglius evadus. It sounds a lot more romantic, doesn't it, than, uh, than Inanga or Galactid. So I think whoever wrote this sign is almost as clever as the person who drew this map of where we're going, which is about here. <laughs> The people we're going to see are Digger, Dozer and Hooli. 
my instructions are to go to the riverbank and shout, and they'll come across in the dinghy, so we'll see how we go. Yeah. There is nothing so wonderful, nothing so wonderful, so delightful as messing around in boats, simply messing around in boats, <laughs> simply messing, I'm quoting, ah! <laughs> Hanging around in boats. <laughs> It's one wind in the willows. <laughs> one pound fifty. The west coast of the South Island is the area most renowned for producing the best white bait. Although white bait can be found in rivers around most of New Zealand, each season many hardcore baiters will take three months away from their regular jobs to go white baiting. The reason for this is twofold. For many, it is a time-honoured tradition with families handing down white bait stands through the years. White bait stands are like property that can be bought and sold, with a good stand being very valuable. For others, it's just a way of making money as white bait is one of the only fish that may be sold commercially by amateur fishermen. With prices of a kilo of white bait coming in at between $50 and $80, and with stories of a good run in the tide exceeding 100 kgs of white bait, the lure of the dollar can be strong. There are several techniques used to catch white bait. Most involve channeling white bait into a sock type net that they cannot escape from. Some of those nets are set with a white sight screen. <clears throat> Plastic road markers are commonly used. So the white bait can be easily seen when they move over the white screen. Fences are used to guide the white bait into the net. Scoop nets and hand traps are also used in areas close to the mouth of the river, where it is neither practical nor possible to put a white bait stand. We have to queue up against a few other predators before we get a chance at catching a feed of white bait. Seabirds, fish like kahawai, flounder and sea run brown trout all relish a feed of white bait. Hmm, poor little buggers don't stand a chance really. A little bait here, mate. There's plenty of bait here. There's at least a patty here. When I'm swimming around trying to film the white bait, came across a couple of little posies, and there's um, quite a few flounder there, and they're sitting together in patches. There's two or three of them in patches. But they're quite easy to get. You swim up to them quietly with your knife and stick them. It's a nice fried flounder for tea. Well, that's pretty amazing. Well done, Darren. I mean, it's obviously worth going for a swim wherever you are and then the other good thing is we haven't yet picked up the white bait net so we've got flounders at least so we eat today wait for the white bait the life cycle of this little fish involves a time when the larvae leave the river and enter the sea and then return to the rivers as translucent juveniles Although the common Galaxias is the most common, four other species of Galaxids are diadromous, which means they spend part of their life in the sea and are migratory. These are also caught with common Galaxias when white baiting. As a food, white bait could be likened to caviar. While many will rave about the taste as one of their favorite foods, others may completely not get it. The joyous New Zealand way of dealing with this delicacy is that white bait is generally cooked and served very simply. Although good white bait recipes are shrouded in secrecy and special ingredients. Without doubt, the preferred method of cooking white bait is in a simple fritter. Within the so-called simple fritter, when you delve a little deeper, there are subtle, unusual twists, like only using the egg white, so as not to mask the flavour of the white bait and secret ingredients such as mint sauce to go with a white bait fritter sandwich. Some say use no flour, while others will add a little flour. As with all recipes, much depends on personal tastes as to which white bait fritter recipe you prefer. Whenever there's a lot of money involved, people will try and pass off imitations or poor quality white bait. It is possible to get Chinese white bait in the shops, which does not stack up against the kiwi stuff. And also white bait that has been back in the river too long will take on a greenish colour and gets a black line of stomach contents because it started feeding. Known as a gutty by white baiters, it is definitely much lower in value and food quality. Well here we are, these are what they look like. 
Uh, we got enough to feed six people. They're all very thankful. And we've got this much to take home. So the rest of you out there, white bait, eat your hearts out. We intend to. Yeah, well, this is going to be a bit of a big ask after what uh, John did back at the Haast Hotel this morning. But uh, I'll tell you what, I'll give it a go. I'll give it my best shot. And uh, we've caught the white bait. These are going fresh into the pan, and I'm going to try and make a white bait omelette of my own. And I'll tell you what, I have never cooked in a finer kitchen than this. This is deluxe. Okay, what we're going to do is shut these eggs in and quickly stir them round before they go too hard and make a sort of bush version of scrambled eggs and then put our white bait on top of them. They're nice eggs, these are local free range, free range eggs from the wild west coast. So what I need is a fork. So I want it just on the point where it starts to, to thicken. So I'll put this back onto the heat. See how they go. They've probably never had a white bait patty like this because it's not a white bait patty, it's a white bait omelette. So they might give them all a shot or they might, they might all throw us out of their white bait can. And you, you can probably hear the boys outside while I slave in the kitchen here. Where they're celebrating their white bait success because we got quite a heap. And uh, in a moment they'll be going into this lovely mixture which is just on the edge of being right. And uh, a little bit of this beautiful Marlborough sea salt, which we should all be grateful for. And then there, you see, it's just starting to turn a little bit. It's just, just starting to congeal. So we want it to turn a little bit more. And then, when it's a little bit more solid, we'll add the white bait and then we'll try and fold it over, which is going to be the real trick. Uh, I'm not going to try and toss it because, uh, I mean, look at the roof. We don't really want to hit that. Although it looks like a number of people have. <laughs> oh, yes, very nice. Yep. Just coming right, just seem to go to the right consistency. It's important to get it just before it starts to set. Okay, I think we're ready to rock and roll with the white bait. Yep. A bit of nice black pepper on top of it. I, I have a feeling this might work, but to, you know. And we'll just put a little bit of lemon on top of that. And that's actually not looking too bad. Yeah, I bet they've never had white bait like this over here. You know, they, some of them get patties and just cook them to death until you can sew your shoes with them. But this should be a little, a little better. See, that, that white bait, that white bait now is almost cooked. We're almost ready to go, and uh, the next mission was to find a table. And, uh, well, we found one. It's a pretty much a West Coast table. That's, uh, this is a, a white bait screen that they don't need for the moment on the stand, and it's mounted on a, uh, I think it's a, a double-edged, side-winding, left-handed straking sprocket. But uh, I'm pretty much I can pick that. Yeah, we'll go and get the white bait. Oh, I think, but, Right. Come on.
Right out here it is. I'm not quite sure it turned out exactly how I wanted it to, but it still looks pretty good. So we'll go and try it on these uh, hungry diners down here. And uh, it's uh, no, it's not quite white bait and scrambled eggs, but it's a little bit similar to it. But we'll we'll see what they think. They'll they'll probably be polite. People down here are polite. Bon appetit. Enjoy. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Well, you caught them. You caught them. You deserve it. Moving north up the coast from Haast, John came across some people in Hokitika who know a few things about cooking great white bait. Trish from the local New World had a great simple recipe for white bait fritters. She also has one of the best white bait stands in the area. Hi, I'm Trish from Hokitika New World, and I want to tell you how to cook white bait with my favourite recipe. Pound of white bait with two eggs, okay, farm fresh organic eggs. We have to have the organic eggs because they've got nice big yellow yolks um, and just a little bit of salt and always cook your white bait in butter. Delicious. John also came across a talented young chef at one of the local restaurants right here in Hokitika. We're here at uh, the Café de Paris which is actually in Hokitika, which is uh, not renowned for its uh, French influence. But there's a lovely young man standing next to me here uh, called Caleb. And uh, he's been a chef since he was six, 15? 15. 15, right. And you're now? 18. 18, he's a child. He's a mere <laughs> child, or as the French would say, an enfant. And he is going to do a sort of white bait version that uh, we weren't quite expecting on the west coast. So go for it, Caleb. All right. This is actually Hokitika River white bait, straight out of the river, about mm, 300 metres down the road. There it goes. Look at it. I'm going to season it with cracked pepper and salt. Can you see how quickly this white bait cooks? Because, I mean, that's virtually done. And that was probably less than 30 seconds. Uh, add some oh, here chopped goes. parsley. Chopped parsley, yep. And a shot of white wine. A naughty shot of white wine. Okay. Ooh. And then I'm going to finish it with a couple of squeezes of lemon juice. Oh, that looks beautiful and it smells beautiful. We will be joining John again on the next episode of Food Culture as he travels to the bottom of the South Island to enjoy the world famous oysters from Bluff. Is there no end to the amazing food and fantastic cooks in this great country? Hmm, we'll find out. <laughs>